Hi there, and welcome back to the Witcher Math channel. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope this is uh, valuable for you. If you're in algebra class and you're working on your binomials and uh, multiplying them, here's a problem uh, we've done before. And let me show you a common mistake. Okay, this is a way for you to check yourself and see if you need to keep watching. The common mistake would be to call this x squared plus 8, right? Because you're going <clears> to <throat> do x times x and 4 times 2. Okay? Now, if that's what you were thinking this answer should be, you should probably keep watching, okay? Now, we need a way to capture the right stuff. And the reason someone would do this the wrong way is, is maybe you're thinking of like terms. And I can't, uh, you know, i got to keep the x's together and the numbers together. Okay? But here's how it really works. Let's say we have our x plus 2 up here. And let's put our x plus 4 over here. It doesn't matter which side you put them on. This is called a, a generic rectangle, by the way. I just love my new red pen, but I'm going to switch it up here in a second. Okay. In the generic rectangle, it's just like that old game of Battleship where we're uh, matching up things on the grid. So, right, I'm going to multiply these things, x times x, x times 2, x times 4, and 2 times 4, right? Just going to line everything up Battleship style, multiply. And then what the product is in each box ends up looking like this. We put the coefficient before the variable, of course. Okay. And then this idea of like terms, which really, that only applies to when we're adding or subtracting. Okay. And here we have like terms. And maybe this helps you think of this. Okay. There's a plus sign in the middle here. 4x plus 2x. So what we end up with here is, if we go in order of power, which you should, there's our new trinomial. So when I multiply a binomial and another binomial, we get a trinomial. All that means is I have uh, three different terms here. Two terms, three terms. <clears throat> okay, there's our answer to that. We used a generic rectangle. Now, maybe, let me give you a little background now. If that all made sense and you're good, hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you'd like a little additional background information and a practice problem or two, stick with me, okay? I'll try to make it short and sweet. Now, maybe you learned this, uh, I call it a party trick, but you've probably never seen it at a party, and I'm kind of joking. But there's a method or an algorithm to square or even just to multiply two-digit numbers. And the trick is this, and this is mentally in your head, this is what makes it a trick. You would go like this, 21 times 21. And you would go, oh, uh, multiply the second number, multiply the two opposite middle numbers, and then add them together. <laughs> one times one is not two. Thanks for catching me on that. Two plus two right, is 4, and then multiply the two twos, and there's a quick and easy mental way for you to <clears throat> get the product of a couple of two-digit numbers, All right? We could do it with uh, 32 also. I am going somewhere with this, so if I lost you there, I'm sorry, okay? Multiply those. 6 plus 6 is 12. Multiply these. Put them in columns. Add them up. Okay, you get the idea. That is actually a version 
of FOIL, which you may have learned in whatever class you're in right now. FOIL is the first outer inner last. You can kind of see that happening. There's the first, there's the last, and then our little uh, cross section in the middle there. That's the inner and the outer, so to speak. <clears throat> so what does this have to do with multiplying binomials? Here's what it has to do with multiplying binomials. Let's take that first example of 21 squared, where we got 441, right? Because we squared the 1, we squared the 2, and then we did 2 times 1 plus 2 times 1. Okay? On a generic rectangle, first of all, 21 is really 20 plus 1, right? Okay. Which means if I do 20 squared, I get 400. I do 1 squared, I get 1. And some people would do it that way. It makes sense to break it up. But when you add those together, that's not the right answer, is it? Where is the other 40? Right? And the answer is 20 times 1 plus 20 times 1. And if we do the generic rectangle with this numerical so-called binomial, you can see how this works. There's 21. There's 21, right? 20 times 20, 20 times 1, 20 times 1 again, and 1 times 1. And then when we uh, get our products here, we have that. And since they're all like terms, they're all numbers, there are no variables here, so we can add them all together, we get that. So hopefully you can see how that works with a number, right? Now, let's let's take that back to a binomial, okay? <clears throat> Having this understanding of it as a number, I think, is very important to understanding why, why they teach FOIL, that FOIL method, and why I choose not to. It's a good uh, connection for us, but I personally uh, think it leads to some confusion sometimes. But let's take this problem, for example. Okay, now here's our rectangle. And we take uh, those two terms there. We'll put those two terms there. 2x times x, 1 times x. 2x times negative 3, and negative 3 times 1. I'm just showing my work here. Of course, you could do this in your head or show your work another way. Okay? But here we have 2x squared. Here we have negative 3x and negative 6x. And picture that plus sign in the middle there. All right, we're going to add those things together. Everything's in the right order automatically. We've got 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 is our answer to that one. Okay? So we can multiply binomials this way. And then one last thing you might be wondering, maybe, um, what would happen if uh, we had something like this? 2y minus x times 2x plus 4. What if we had two binomials that did not have like terms in them, right? Well, we do it the same way. Once you see this process broken down with numbers and understand it at that simple level, it doesn't matter what these look like. You can trust it, okay? So I'm going to make this one last problem here, and then we're going to go, all right? Perfect. So 2x times 2y makes 4xy. 2x times negative x makes negative 2x squared. 2y times 4 makes 8y. <clears throat> and 4 times negative x is negative 4x. Now check this out. I actually have 
Oh, there's that bell. That's my bell for lunchtime, though. What I have here is a polynomial. I've got four different terms here, but that's okay. I'm just going to put my squares first. Going to put my powers of one next. And we're done. Okay. So it looks a little bit longer, maybe more complicated or confusing, but the bottom line is the rectangles make it very easy for us to work through that. And if you're stuck on the FOIL method, if you just love the FOIL method and you think this might be cute, but you're not going to use it, here's, here's how it connects. There's our first, there's our last, and you take your pick. Um, here's our uh, outer is here. So there's our outer, there's our inner. So you can see how the FOIL method translates directly into rectangles. But if the FOIL method has ever done you wrong, maybe rectangles would be the way to go. Okay, that's going to do it for this time. Thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more. We're going to do more of this stuff. It's just going to get uh, more complicated, but don't worry. You can trust it. It's going to work every time. Thanks for watching. See you later.